as you all I'm sure know that the data that's come back within the last year on this other pandemic, the mental health pandemic, um, is really quite startling, whether it's about the um, rate of um, anxiety and depression in young people, which has more than doubled. And um, they're now more over half of young people are identifying that they're struggling with either some form of anxiety or depression right now or have been for the last year, um, or even suicide ideation, um, a suicide attempts. Those are the more extreme examples. But I think the bottom line is that the pandemic has really exacerbated issues that have always been there. And I, I can't wait to hear how you will describe this for the work that you all do. But in our context, um, young people have always struggled with their mental health. Actually, most people struggle at some point with their mental health. I think that's what makes all of this so personal to all of us, as we all know someone who in our family or in our broader group of friends has struggled. And it's actually a normal thing to struggle with your mental health and what you really need in those moments, um, whether you're a young person struggling or an adult, is you need to know how to get help when you need it and how to both help yourself, help a friend, help a family member, um, get to a professional, et cetera. And so um, what we saw in the beginning of the pandemic was those rates of, of anxiety and depression rising, um, the obvious social isolation that especially young people who need that social connection were, were facing. Um, but I think the story that's less told um, that of course is so inspiring to us is that young people were also the first ones to act on that problem and to show up for each other. So I, I think I told you, Dave, at the time, the story that really inspired me, the very beginning of the pandemic was probably like March 20th. So very early on in lockdown, we were still as an organization struggling to figure out how to respond um, when we had had to close our in-person programming. Obviously for the year, we're trying to figure out this whole like digital virtual solution. And of course it was actually our young people who showed us the way. So one young person in particular, um, a person who identifies as Joe Lee, um, uses she, they pronouns in New York at College of Staten Island actually started recording um, for us videos in their room at home as Jolie was literally going to virtual college, a college of Staten Island, and by the way, working as an essential worker in a hospital in New York in lockdown as their part-time job and living at home and doing all of this. And at 10 o'clock at night in their room was recording these videos on like how to cope during the pandemic for other young people through Pure Health Exchange. And it just seemed, I remember myself sort of struggling with my own overwhelm at that moment and seeing this video and just being like, okay, I can do this. Like, I'm gonna, the least I can do is show up and figure out how to get this video to lots of young people. Um, so I just think that part of the, the kind of need has really, of course, shown us all um, all the need and broader inequity in that need, especially for young people of color in this country. But it's also shown us that those young people actually in particular are the first ones who know how to do and show up for each other in ways that if we just give them that platform and that space, like they will help themselves and each other um, get through this and actually we will be stronger for it if we follow their lead.